I'll start over. It's melt, like it's melting all over. This is so melty. Hi. Everything melted. Hi. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I have another sneak preview for you from What's For Dessert. This is such a fun recipe. It's really perfect for making with kids because there's almost no cooking. All you do is toast some nuts and heat up a little cream. This is my classic Sunday bomb. So imagine that this is everything you love about a classic ice cream sundae, but assembled into one sliceable and easily shared dessert. It's so much fun and so good. This is called a bomb. A bomb is a type of frozen dessert. There is something called like pata bomb, which is a uses like Italian meringue. This just uses ice cream. This is a recipe that is basically assembly only. I think there's like a t definitely a time and a place for those desserts where all of the effort goes into assembling and making it look great because the work is already done for you. You have great high quality ice cream and you're just sort of adding to it and assembling it and making it look really fun. I think it's great for birthday parties. It's obviously meant to be shared. It's eating an ice cream sundae, but it's like cutting a cake. The only sort of trick to this recipe is like working quickly to avoid lots of melting. You don't want that. I have as the base of the bomb, a pint of chocolate ice cream and two pints of vanilla ice cream. You could use any flavors that you want, but I wanted to keep it classic with chocolate and vanilla. If you want to do other flavors, just make sure there's a color contrast between them. Then I have three quarters of a cup of maraschino cherries that I like rinsed and drained and patted dry. I'm like not a maraschino cherry person, but I, I had to put them in here. The, the flavor is just instantly tells you like, this is a classic sundae. Sprinkles for decorating, two ounces of dark chocolate, Two thirds of a cup of slivered almonds. You could do another nut if you like, but I wanted almonds again for that like, you know, kind of classic Sunday looking flavor. Peanuts would be great. Heavy cream. And then I have nine ounces of chocolate wafers. The recipe calls for just like one sleeve of the famous chocolate wafers, if you can find those. I couldn't find those, so these are literally just like Oreos without the cream filling. You just want something that's crisp. So if you wanted to use another cookie, just use another cookie that's sort of dry and crisp and not like chewy. So special equipment, you really don't need any special equipment except for one thing, which is a two quart bowl. So I have this metal bowl. It's better if the bowl is metal, that's preferable to plastic or glass because it stays cold. I lined it with two pieces of foil that I crisscrossed and I was really careful to smooth it really well into the contours of the bowl so that it fits in all of the curves. Better than this bowl is a bowl with a rounded bottom. So that will give you that fully domed look. I didn't have a rounded bottom bowl here. So that's optimal. And if you can have a bowl that's like a little bit taller, that's even better. But you know, uh, any sort of basic metal mixing bowl will work. Just make sure it has a two quart capacity. So as far as other special equipment, you'll need a large mixing bowl for folding your ice cream, a, like a resealable bag for bashing the cookies and then a small saucepan for assembly. But that's it. In order to get the look that I want in the proportions, you need to sort of mark this, the seven cup volume point. So after I lined it last night, I poured seven cups of water into the bowl, and then I used a piece of tape to mark where the water line was. And that's gonna be my guide as I form the chocolate layer that's like the shell for the bomb. Okay, so the first step is to make that chocolate layer that is like the exterior of the bomb. But before I start that, I'm gonna stick my bowl in the freezer because it's much, you increase your working time as far as forming that layer if your bowl is cold. So that's why metal is best because that is going to chill down really quickly. And keep your ice cream frozen until you're ready to assemble. Oh God. Now the only other prep that you have to do is to toast your nuts. So I toasted these last night, just put them in a 350 oven until they were golden brown and let them cool. It's also handy to have a large spoon. You could just use it like a flexible spatula, but this is helpful for smoothing that ice cream layer around the sides and across the bottom. 
So go ahead and transfer the cookies to the bag, then seal it and press out the air at the same time. And then I wanna sort of beat these, you can use like the bottom of a heavy saucepan or a rolling pin is great. I wanna beat these until I have like coarse crumbs with some larger pieces. So not like, you know, crumbs like I'm making a graham cracker crust, but not huge pieces. So this is just gonna add lots of texture. Like I love cookies and cream ice cream. So that was kind of the idea behind incorporating the chocolate wafers into the chocolate layer. If you are using ice cream that comes in like a plastic carton, just take a spoon or an ice cream scoop and scoop it into the bowl. But with a paper carton, I can cut right through it. So I like to take, take a nice sturdy chef knife and cut down and straight through the carton. Then I like to cut through the halves again. And then each half into quarters. And now I can just transfer those right into the bowl. So this is a method of quickly transferring everything out of the carton and into the bowl because what you're really racing against here is time. Like you do not want this to melt and get overly soft just because the ice cream will lose that smooth, creamy texture and can then like freeze again pretty icy. It's better to use something rigid, not flexible like this, to start to work the ice cream against the sides of the bowl. If you've seen episodes of Dessert Person where I'm using like pie dough or pastry and I beat it on the countertop, this is my, I always say this, but like this is my yoga. This is similar. What I'm trying to do is soften the texture but without warming the ice cream too much. Like I don't want it to melt. I just want it to become spreadable and trying to incorporate those crumbs at the same time. I have an even mixture with those crumbs distributed throughout the ice cream and everything is kind of spreadable and it's starting to melt a little bit. So you really are racing against the clock here. So I'm gonna stop stirring. I'm going to scrape three quarters of this mixture into my prepared bowl. And then a quarter of it, I'm gonna set aside and put into this container. This is what I'm going to spread across the top of the bomb, which then becomes the bottom. So this should just go back into the freezer. And this mixture goes directly into the bowl. But that's why we froze the bowl. Like it is starting to melt, but the bowl will help keep it cold. So now, I mean, you can use your spatula or a spoon like this, and you are going to spread this into the bottom of the bowl, following the shape of the bowl all the way around, and then work it up the sides. And I'm going to work it right up to that level where the tape is. That's how I know how tall this should go. Now, if you feel like it's too melty, and it's not really holding its shape inside the bowl, pop it in the freezer and come back in 10 minutes and then continue to smooth. So the freezer is your friend. You definitely want to leverage the freezer throughout the process if it's getting warm. I have a nice even layer of chocolate all the way around. It comes right up to the level of that piece of tape. So this will go back in the freezer and this needs to really freeze solid before I fill it with my vanilla layer. So about an hour in the freezer. Maraschino cherries, not something in regular rotation in my kitchen. I wanted them in the Sunday bomb because it just feels like something I cannot separate from an ice cream sundae. But I was sort of a little bit torn because it's like, it's not a great product as far as like, you know, there's nothing about a maraschino cherry that resembles an actual cherry. But then I added them and I ate them and I realized that when they're frozen, they lose some of the cloying artificial flavor and take on like a really satisfying chewy texture. So you don't have to include them if you like really hate them or don't like them, but they do more work than any other ingredient to like make you think that you're eating like a classic sundae. So I really recommend them. I have three quarters of a cup. I rinsed them and patted them dry really, really well. So that's important. And then I have my toasted almonds. And now I'm gonna grab my vanilla ice cream. I have two pints of vanilla ice cream. So I'm gonna do that same trick that I did with the chocolate, which is to cut down through the pints. This ice cream is pretty soft already. There's just been so much in and out of the freezer that nothing is like super frozen solid. But unlike with the chocolate layer, we don't have to really mold this. This just gets pressed right down into the bowl. 
This is actually so soft that I think I can just stir it with the flexible spatula and not the wooden spoon. I am working this just until it's spreadable. I'm gonna add the cherries and the almonds. As I mentioned, you could use another nut, you could use pecans, you could use peanuts. Then go ahead and fold this until everything is well combined. And now I'm gonna grab my mold. This whole mixture gets scraped inside my chocolate layer. Make sure you're not making any big air pockets. And if you paid attention to the, that little level where we made the tape, that seven cup mark, your vanilla should come right to the top of that chocolate layer, just like this. So smooth that so that the surface is level. But because this is so frozen, like I actually, this has been freezing now for over an hour, this basically stops the melting of the vanilla. So this looks wonderful. You can see I have this smooth surface. Back into the freezer. This has to really freeze solid and because of this bigger volume of ice cream, it's gonna take a couple of hours. So go ahead and let this hang out in the freezer for two hours. You want the surface of the vanilla nice and firm. So this is just that quarter of the chocolate ice cream mixture. And in that two hours, it's frozen somewhat solid, but it's like the presence of those cookies also kind of keeps it spreadable. So I'm just working it. You could just use like a regular spoon, which is fine. Time to grab the bomb. I'm gonna spread this chocolate layer just to cover the vanilla. It's not a very thick layer, but the quantities are such that when you go to slice it, you have like an even coverage on the bottom and the sides. So now I have my whole chocolate layer on top and do your best to make it as flat as possible because that's gonna become the bottom of the bomb and you want it to sit flat on your serving plate. So I'm gonna put this back in the freezer. You wanna give it just like another hour. That top layer will fully freeze and the center will continue to harden and firm up. And I'm also gonna freeze a serving plate. That's really important. Good to have a serving plate that's really cold to prevent melting. The final decoration on the bomb is a layer of ganache. And when it hardens over the ice cream, it gives you that like chewy texture, very similar to hot fudge. So that is the inspiration for the topping. And then of course, sprinkles, optional, use them if you want to. I have two ounces of chocolate and I have one and a quarter cups of heavy cream. A quarter cup is gonna go into the ganache and then the remaining one cup I'm gonna whip to serve along with the bomb. So for the ganache, I'm going to pour a quarter cup of cream into my saucepan, just a small saucepan, and then bring this to a gentle simmer. It's only a quarter cup, so it will heat up very quickly. And I'm gonna put my chocolate in a small bowl. You can add a pinch of salt if you like. That's always nice with ganache. Just bring this up to a simmer over medium low, medium, medium low. So this is starting to steam. So I'm gonna pull it off the heat. Let it cool just for a few seconds before you pour it over the chocolate because if it's like really, really hot, it tends to kind of like break the chocolate. And then you wanna let this sit for a few minutes and then the heat from the cream will like slowly melt the chocolate and gently melt it. And then we'll stir that through. You don't wanna work a lot of air into it. So you just kind of start stirring from the center. So I have this Totally smooth, glossy mixture. So I'm gonna set that aside. I want it to cool off a little bit. I don't want it to be like really hot when I pour it on the ice cream because then the ice cream will start to melt. So while that cools off, I'm gonna grab the bomb. This is the one I made last night. I'm going to invert it. I'm showing you how to unmold it onto a serving plate. So take your serving plate and then upside down over the bomb and then invert them together. And then all you do is tug down on the foil to unmold it. And then go ahead and peel off the foil. And now I can't get this off. Oh my God. It's ice, see there's ice on the top of the, uh, from that water I put in the bowl. I guess the bowl was still a little wet. Did you see that? <laughs> I just flicked. Oh my God, we should just stop. 
this whole day, it, let's just cancel it. I can't believe that just happened. All right, so I have my bomb. I have a little bit of ice on it because I think I had water in the bottom of the bowl when I was putting the, the foil in. I'm just trying to take any of that off. And you can see that it's not like a perfectly smooth finish, but it's relatively, like it's nice and uniform. And if you want to, you can go over it with like a little spatula and smooth any rough areas if the foil like left a lot of little wrinkles in it. So now, before this thing really starts melting, I'm gonna pour the ganache over top. So you can see it's thickened a little bit as it's cooled. And we wanna pour it onto the highest point of the dome. Go ahead and pour this over top. It's gonna make these nice big drips as it goes over. And you can kind of pour where you want a few more drips to form. So then before the ganache really hardens over the ice cream, I'm gonna finish it with some sprinkles. And then that's it, into the freezer immediately because the ganache has to harden. So like at least another 15 minutes in the freezer and then we can come back and slice it. And in the meantime, I'm gonna whip the cream. This is why I like this show is because I never feel like throwing something against the wall. What I love about this is that you're serving something that could be really messy and use like a million bowls and spoons, you know, if you had like a whole assembly line for ice cream sundaes, but all you're doing is cutting slices. You can slice it and serve it really, really quickly and it's just like less fuss than a whole Sunday bar. If your bomb is super frozen, like maybe you made it the night before or you have like a really powerful freezer, you can dip the knife in some hot water and then dry it off. So that will help to slice through everything. But the ice cream is like still pretty soft, so I know I'll be able to cut a slice. This whole thing is a little bit soft. There you see the little cross section of the slice. And then to finish, you have to have a dollop of whipped cream on top. Mm. I snuck a little bite and I ate a piece of maraschino cherry. It does not give you that like cloying artificial flavor when it's frozen. It's just this kind of chewy, sweet little thing in there. Mm. I think the toasted nuts are also really important because they balance out the sweetness of everything and give you a little bit of a savory crunch, which I really, really like. So this is my Classic Sunday Bomb from What's for Dessert. It's a little preview of recipes from the book, which are like overall kind of like simpler, uh, more approachable recipes using easy to find ingredients and things that will not sort of keep you in the kitchen all day long. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I know what you're gonna say, which is that I am so miserable. <laughs> I'll start over. It's melt, like it's melting all over. This is so melty. Every, everything melted. <laughs>